Hello and welcome to a very special How I Paint Things. Now today I've got on the table in front of me a Space Marine Scout. Now these guys are pretty cool. They tend to go between being some of the best or the worst units in the Space Marine Army, depending on which edition you happen to be playing. But luckily in 8th edition they are at the zenith of some of their abilities. So definitely worth having a unit of these guys in your army. Now Scouts, they are young Marines who have not yet been fully bonded to their ability to wear power armor. So their job is to sort of rove ahead of the, the rest of the Marine force. And they identify key targets, bring down coordinates for sort of bombardments and what have you, and generally cause a ruckus. They're pretty neat. Now, I tend to paint my guys a little bit darker than they appear on the box, because I'm not a big fan of that really bright white trousers that they, they have wearing on those covers. So here's how we're going to go ahead and paint mine. <laughs> like I said, I always sort of do things the way I like, and you guys can adapt what you fancy from that. So to start off with, let's get a look at the paints we're going to use. Now I've started from a base coat of Mournfang Brown, because I like that tone it's going to give us. It'll be a little bit more earthy, and anywhere that we might happen to miss with some of our colours, it'll be the sort of dingy, dirty brown anyway. And that's fine, because with Scouts, I think they ought to look like they're operating behind the lines. You know, <laughs> none of this pristine white pair of khakis that you got on the box art. We'll start with the largest area of colour, and that's going to be their armour. So for this Ultramarine Scout, that'll be McCrag Blue. Now you can swap this colour out in this stage for almost any chapter that you're going to be painting. You know, I might use Mephiston Red for Blood Angels, Dark Angels Green for those guys, <laughs> you know, it's really a matter of just picking what's going to work. We're going to wash the whole model with Agrax Earthshade, but then we are going to layer over the armor with the base color again. So in that way, we can use this for just about any chapter. The only change to that would be if you're going to do a chapter that has black armor, in which case I'd paint the armor black and instead of the equipment being black, we'd swap that out for a brown, but we can see that a bit later. Once I've done the armor though, we'll go on to Rakarth Flesh for his fatigues. Bugman's Glow will be where we do all of his skin. And remember if you've got the guy with the heavy bolter assembled, he's got bare arms as well, so don't miss those. Straight over the top of Bugman's Glow though, I'm going to do some layering with Cadian Flesh Tone. That'll just help establish some of the shape of his face. We'll do Lead Belcher for all of the metal details. And then at the same time, Retributor Armor will be any of the minor gold details. Then, finishing off just to tidy up, we'll use a black. Now I've got here my Vallejo flat black. And just a quick note, I like to use this because the coverage is a little better than Abaddon black. The difference between the two of them, at least as far as I've seen, is that Abaddon black finishes with a slightly sort of satin top. It's quite pleasant, but I really want the coverage because I'm going to varnish this guy anyway, so the finish of the two paints isn't going to matter too much. What I want is the coverage. So let's get started. We'll crack on with that McCrag Blue. Now I'm going to be using a small base brush for most of this model because there's not really a huge amount of sort of really little detail on them. And on top of that, these small base brushes do come to quite a nice point. So what you want to do now is cruise around all of his armor. And you might find you can get this done with one coat. You know, McCrag Blue covers quite well. Um, whatever you tend to be using though, just Make sure it's a nice solid color when it goes on. Now once the armor is done, we move on to his fatigues. And as a quick note, don't forget things like the backs of his van braces and his little um, little plates on the back of his gloves. So with our Rakarth flesh, in we go, just start painting on all of the fatigues. Now unlike the McCrag blue, you might need to come back and do a second thin coat of this. But whatever's necessary, just cruise around now and let's get these painted. Now that's already starting to look a little bit more familiar. <laughs> now as well here, I have actually gone around with a little bit of McCrag blue again because I'd found there were one or two spots that I'd missed. And honestly, that's one of the really big bonuses to using these base coats from the pots without having to mix and that if anything goes awry, you can fix it up quite quickly. So I've got here my Bugman's Glow and no great surprise, let's get in there on his face and Probably a second thin coat. Now moving straight on to Cadian Flesh Tone. What we're going to do here is paint over most of his face, but leave little details like around his eyes and sort of just little impressions of his brow. 
to try and build up some of the shape of his face. So this one, you know, this is a little bit of practice here, but you'll find you can actually get a lot more sort of shape to these, uh, these older sculpts. Just a little bit of mucking around at this stage. Now it doesn't look particularly inspiring at the moment, does it? <laughs> it always looks a little messy first going on, but I promise that will be sorted out. Now we're going to go on to our lead belcher, and no great surprise, anywhere that you want to be metallic, just go ahead and get this on now. Same too with the chest eagles, like anywhere that's going to be gold, touch it in with silver now, just because of how well it covers. Um, now if you're painting a different chapter, of course you might substitute in whatever color you're going to be using for the chest eagles here, but let's just go around now and let's do the ultramarine. And once you've got all that silver down, you've got the right base coat for the gold to go over the top. So let's just get in there now. And any of these gold areas. You can be quite sparing with this uh, in most cases. This is really just so that he fits in with the rest of his battle brothers. And now you can get in anywhere that's going to be black and just base coat it in your black. <laughs> Whichever one you've chosen to use. Just remember straps and stuff like that along the back of his legs. And do make sure you get all of his equipment pouches. You can also blacken his hair at the same time. I'm going to touch mine up with a little Mournfang brown and give him brown hair just to mix things up a little in my squad. So with all of those base coats applied, I've let those dry and then just gone over in a couple of places to make sure that they are nice and solid. While I was putting on the black, I did manage to uh, foul up a couple of spots. <laughs> but a quick blast with some McCrag blue finished that off and then I went around and dotted in sort of equipment uh, buttons and what have you. Now I've got my, what do you call it? Uh, <laughs> forgot the name of Agrax Earthshade, can you believe that? And <laughs> my shade brush. So what I'm going to do now is go over the whole model, but I don't want to be too generous with this. I actually really just want to sort of paint it into the recesses and make sure it isn't pooling anywhere on top. Now, if it does pull, don't worry too much because we're going to go over a couple of these spots later on anyhow, but just now go around and you want to apply this everywhere on the model. Now after about half an hour of drying time, this is what we've got at the other end. And that's pretty cool, and I'm quite liking the look of that. But it has gone and made that armor look a little dirty in some places. But that's okay, because what we're going to do now is layer over the top of most of it, just to brighten it up again. Now you can do as little or as much of this as you like, but I recommend uh, leave those little sort of dingy parts in the recesses intact, so that you've got some of that shading still. So once we've got that base coat down again, it looks much richer, much more pleasant blue. So what I've got now is a little Calgar blue, and anywhere that I want to really accentuate any edges, let's just go in there now. And you can be quite sparing with this, honestly. With the Scouts, they don't have as many sort of hard edges as the uh, full-size Marines do. So just cruise around, and anywhere you want to imply a really hard edge, just a little line of Kelgar blue will do the job. As you can see, it doesn't take much to bulk that out and really add a lot more depth. I mean, really just some little lines right on the corners, okay? You don't have to go overboard to get that effect. Nice and simple. So now I'm going to do the same thing. I've got here Storm Vermin Fur and Dawnstone. And I'm going to use the Storm Vermin Fur to do that to all of the leather areas. And the Dawnstone I'm going to use on the gun itself, you know, that sort of hard metallic black. I just like to use a little bit of sort of variety to make the leather look slightly different from that hard casing. As you can see, my lines are probably a little thicker than they need to be. Uh, I just can't see particularly well <laughs> at the moment. <laughs> Now, because we've kind of pre-shaded the face already, there isn't much to do here. I've got myself some Kislev flesh, and I'm just going to add a little bit more definition to the face by doing cheeks, nose, brow, all those normal high points you would see on a face. Then we'll move on to Runefang Steel, just to do the edge highlight along any of the metal areas. And talking about edges, you can get just the edge of your brush rather than trying to use the point and lightly sort of scrape down the side of any of these big areas of metal. And that gives you a very nice, very straight edge 
nice and easy. When you get to some of these smaller areas, it might be a little more difficult for you to do that with your brush, but give it a try. You'll find it makes edge highlighting all that easier if you can sort of cheat this step. Now there isn't really very much left to do, just a little bit of liberator gold to edge along any of those gold areas, and you'll find because we gave that base coat a Agrax Earthshade, sorry, an Agrax Earthshade <laughs> wash, this will give you kind of a brassy looking gold. And I think that looks quite neat on the scouts. Uh, something that looks like it's been out in the field a little while and has actually seen some use rather than being meticulously polished somewhere in a chapter monastery. Now, just a quick note on his trousers. If you do want to go all the way up for that really clean look, with a very bright white sort of look, start off with flayed one flesh, and then go ahead and you'd highlight that with a little pallid witch flesh. Now, I've got a video here on layering and sort of how you would be able to get that, but because I want this guy to fit my own army, I'm actually just going to go ahead and straight away highlight him with flayed one flesh. I don't want to go so bright. So where I'm aiming for is any sort of raised areas just on the other side of where the wash has settled. And to do that, I'm sort of accentuating the shape of those trousers. I don't want to use very much of this if I'm honest, just enough to make it look like I have paid it some attention. <laughs> but just go around now, you can use as little or as much of this as you like, as I'm fond of saying. Now with those few highlights of flayed one flesh, there's not a lot on the front, but if we flip around, you get a better idea of sort of how you can use that to accentuate all of the folds in his fatigues there. But with those last highlights, that is actually our scout complete. All he needs now is his base, and I'm going to go ahead and varnish him before I get some photos. So as I pointed out earlier, guys, you can use the basics of this for any single chapter. Okay, just swap out the color of the, uh, the armor, and if you need to, just change the equipment to something brown. It'll fit with just about anything. Now you can get in touch, just drop a comment in the old uh, YouTube box below, or you can pop on to Facebook or Twitter. Those are both linked down there too. As ever, guys, thank you very much for your time, and you enjoy the rest of your day.